Again, I welcome you to our service today. Uh, if this is Nedu Obed from Love Divine Ministry, if you want to know more about us, you can check us out at lovedivinechurch.org, lovedivinechurch.org, and you will see more about us. So we want to continue with our worship today. Today we want to, we want to right now, get into the message. And I want to start by asking this question. Can anyone tell me from the Holy Scriptures, from the Holy Bible, where a born-again, spirit-filled Christian had to go for deliverance? A born-again, spirit-filled, Holy Spirit-filled Christian had to go for deliverance so that he can get freedom to do the things that he, needed, he needs to do in his life. Or she can go so that she can get the the, the, the weight of his ancestors or those people who are meaning don't mean well to him or her off her shoulder or his shoulder so that he can or she can succeed. Can anyone tell me of that scripture in the Bible from the Holy Scriptures? I still can't find such. Today I want to talk, I want us to talk about success, how to succeed. One of the title of the message is Don't Let Others Stop Your Blessing. Don't let others stop your blessing. In other words, don't allow the things that others have done on your behalf or the things you think they did again on your behalf or the things they are doing against you to stop you from receiving the blessings that God has ordained for your life. Why do I speak this way? I speak this manner in this manner because the Bible calls us the children of the living God. And with that a title comes so many things that I believe today that a lot of people, a lot of people who call themselves the children of God are missing. So we want to talk about that today. Free to succeed. I want you to know that the scriptures have given us evidence that we can be free to succeed in life. We can be free to do, accomplish the things that God has put us on this planet to accomplish. We can be free from all manner of bondages that we may think that are upon us. How to free yourself from the sins of your fathers and your mothers and those who came before you. How to free yourself from the fear of those that you think are right now doing things to hinder your progress as a child of God. I'm here to tell us today that we have all that we need in Christ Jesus. Yes, we can, no one can deny the fact that there are problems all over the place. People have problems, all kinds of problems. Some have marital problems. Some have relationship problems. Some have career problems. And they don't seem to find a way out of their problems. And unfortunately, whatever the case may be, we can truly say that these problems are real in their lives. So I'm in no way, shape, or form discounting someone who is dealing with some situations and don't know how to get out of it. This is why the Word of God has been given to us, so that we can find freedom, so that we can escape all these things that we feel are not allowing us to succeed, are not allowing us to be the people that our God, our Father in heaven has made us to be. So today I'm praying and believing that after this discussion today, after this message today, you will no longer see yourself as bound by the issues that happen to you. You will no longer see yourself has held back because somebody else did something in your lineage. You will see yourself as somebody who has been freed indeed by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You will be, you'll be empowered to go out and accomplish that thing that God has put in your heart. And I have you know, sometimes when you begin to work on the things that God has put in your heart, people may have doubts. Why? Because those things have not been given to them. It's not to them, it's to you. 
So you must stand on what God has said and refuse to let things around you hinder you. Whether it's ancestral problems, whether it's somebody you know don't truly like you and it has an impact in your life one way or the other, no matter what it is, whether you because you came from a very poor background, whatever it is, I want you to know that God has given you what it takes to become what he wants you to be. Praise the Lord. Praise the Amen. Lord. So again, I want to talk about the condition that we find ourselves. The society and the upbringing, the training has conditioned many of us to blame others when it comes to our situations. We People are no longer taking responsibility for the things that they are, they are doing that is not right or their failures. It is easy to look somewhere else to blame when things are not going well. This is what we find ourselves, and it seems like society has accepted it. But this ought not to be so for those who want to succeed, for those who want to accomplish that which the Lord God has put in their hearts to accomplish. If our Lord Jesus was to turn and be blaming others, you and I will not be called children of God today. If we, our Lord Jesus looked at all the hindrances that faced him when he walked this planet, when the religious organizations, the, the leaders of the people, when they turned against him, if he would have looked at them and said, okay, I see I couldn't succeed. This cross is looking further and further away. I'm not able to get to that cross and pay for the salvation that I came for. If he had been able, if he had thought that way, you and I will not be called children of God today. We will not have the Holy Spirit blessing us today but our lord stayed on the cross because he knew who he was he knew who has called him to do what he has come to do he knew what he was to accomplish and he knew what it would take to accomplish that he knew who was backing him up praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah so i said to you today whether your problem is some uncle, some in-law, some ancestral problems that came along, whether your problem is financial, whether it's relationship-wise, whatever that problem is, I want you to know today that God has an answer for you. And that's what you and I are going to see today as we go along. But before we can get ourselves from out of this situation that we may find ourselves, out of the situation that hinders that person who is trying to succeed. Before we can let ourselves free from that, I want us to look at what the scripture said in John 8, 31, 32. The book of John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. The scripture says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, if you abide in my words and are my disciples indeed, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. He gave them a statement, conditional statement here. If you abide in my word, that's when you become my true disciples. You're not disciples because you said you're disciples. You are not a disciple because you call yourself a Christian. You are not a, the type of disciple Jesus is looking for because you go to church. You are not a disciple because you preach the gospel or you preach the Christian message. You are a disciple when you abide in the word of the Lord. And now he said, now if you abide in the word of the Lord and you are my disciple, then you shall know the truth. And the truth will do what? Who keep him in bondage. No, he didn't say that. He never said the truth will keep us in bondage. He said the truth shall make us free. When we know the truth, the truth shall make us free. The question is, free from what? The truth shall make us free. My understanding of that scripture means, if the Lord frees me, I am free indeed in all areas of my life. 
if the Lord frees me, I am free indeed in all areas of my life, including the area where I feel like that some people have done something in my lineage in the past that would have been a bondage upon my life. If the Lord frees me, I am truly freed from that situation also. Remember the question I asked in the beginning. Can you tell me in the Holy Bible where a born-again spirit-filled child of God needs to be looking for deliverance everywhere he or she goes? I say to you, don't let others stop your blessings. Don't let others stop your blessings. The Lord has just hinted us here that we can be free if we just know the truth. The truth from the word of God. I want us to look at the truth from the word of God today. We're going to use the story of Asa from the Old Testament. Asa from the Old Testament. This will show us that no matter what the situation is, we should never allow others to stop our blessings. We should never allow others to stop our destiny. We should never allow others to make us make the wrong choices in life. Esa, we're going to look at Esa. We can see that we can succeed in the eye of the Lord no matter what our foundation was, no matter who is trying to work against us. I want us to go into Esa. We're going to learn a few things out from Esa today. First, what we want to know about Esa, who is this Esa that we're talking about from the Old Testament? The Bible tells us that Esa was one of the kings of Judah. This was in the times when Israel was a divided kingdom and there was Jerusalem, Judah and Israel. Judah was the side that was tends towards doing the will of God. Israel at that time, for the most part, their rulers were evil and ungodly and they continued to do things. But even in Judah, they had ungodly kings also. So Esa was in uh, Judah as a king. Esa was the son of Abijam. Abijam was his father, the king before him. And before that, you had uh, Rehoboam, who was the father of Abijam. So Esa's grandfather was Rehoboam, and Abijam was his father. Why is this important? Why am I saying this about Asa? Why do we have to know who his parents were? Rehoboam's father was uh, Solomon. Why do we have to know this? I want us to look at 1 King chapter 15, verses 1 to 3. 1 King chapter 15, verses 1 to 3. 1 King chapter 15, verses 1 to 3. The scripture says, In the 18th year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, Abijam, became king over Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Macha, Macha, the granddaughter of Abishalom, and he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him. His heart was not loyal to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. I don't know if you get the story here. So Abijam reigned in Judah. The Bible says that he walked in all the sins of his father. Who was his father? Rehoboam. I know this might be a little confusing when you say, you say that Jeroboam the son of Nebat. I was talking about Jeroboam was the king in Jerusalem, in Israel. He was the son of Nebat. Then we talked about Abijan ruled in Judah. And Abijan was living in sin. He walked in all the sins of his father. Who was his father? Rehoboam. Rehoboam also did some ungodly things as a king. He says, he said he did not do according to what David, his father, did. Obviously, the way they they, they, they show the lineage. David was the beginning of the, the kingdom in Judah in terms of king the lineage. So the people who came through him will be referred, he will be referred to as their father. 
So that, that we shouldn't let that confuse us now. So what am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is that Esa had a father who was an ungodly father. And his father's father was also an ungodly father. They worked in sin. They, they, they ruled in sin. They allowed idols to be erected in East, in Judah. They allowed people to begin to worship idols of all kinds in Judah. The Bible tells us that a child of a Jewish person or a, an Israelite ought to worship one God and one God only. But these kings allowed these things to happen. So by so doing, they brought sin into the land. They literally encouraged the worship of idol in the land of Judah. This is called laying on godly foundation for the descendants that will come after them. This is called laying on godly foundation for a land, for a nation, for a kingdom. So when you, as a people of God, you see ungodliness happening in the land and you turn your eyes away or you support it, what you're doing is laying on godly foundation. When you see evil happening in your community, in your family, and you don't do anything about it, what you're doing is laying on godly foundation. I want you to know that they laid on godly foundation that is designed to prevent the people that are coming after them from having good success. So Esa was a man who received ungodly foundation. Esa was a man who received a foundation that has been put in bondage. Esa was a man who, if he was today, would be going around looking for all manner of deliverance to save himself from the situation he found himself. But I want us to look at what Esa did in 1 Kings 15, 1 to 3. 1 Kings, the scripture says, In the eighteenth year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, Abijon became king, and he reigned three years. Uh, no, I've said that. Let me move forward a little bit. Let's go to uh, 1 Kings 15, 9 to 11. 1 Kings 15, 9 to 11. It says, in the twentieth year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, Esa became king over Judah. And he reigned forty-one years in Jerusalem. His grandfather's name was <coughs> Macha, and his granddaughters of Abishon. Esa did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, as did his father David. Esa did what was right in the eye of the Lord, says the Bible. Despite the condition he found himself in, despite the foundation that was given to him, after watching his father's and his grandfather's situation, Esa chose to do right from, by God. Esa, we will say today, had good success because the Bible said he did what was right in the eye of the Lord. And I say to you and I today, don't let others stop your blessings. Don't let others stop your blessings. Don't allow excuses. Don't like allow situations that you find yourself in to prevent you from doing what was right, what is right, or to prevent you from pursuing that vision that God has given to you. It is the vision of the Lord for the king to be a good king, to rule wisely, to allow the people to worship God and worship God properly. Asa, the Bible said, Asa began the process of destroying idols in the land of Judah, and he encouraged the worship of God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. We could have said, well, Asa received a bad uh, foundation, so he couldn't do these things. Or we could have said that all oh, the sins of his fathers well, we work against him, so he's bound not to be able to succeed in what he set his mind to do. But that was not the case with Esa. Regardless of the situation he found himself in, he made a choice to correct what was wrong. So what can we learn from the story of Esa today for ourselves? First, we must choose to do what is right in the eye of the Lord. 
we must choose to do what is right in the eye of the Lord. The Bible says to us that he laid before us good and evil, that we should choose good. We should choose good. I'm still going to the point where we have the capacity to choose this good if we so desire. God will bless us when we do, when we choose the right thing, when we choose the right step, when we stop letting others stop our blessings, God will bless us mightily. Esau's fathers again laid foundation that wasn't right for him to prosper, and yet he was able to succeed despite the foundation. Why was he able to succeed? His heart was right with God. He chose to have the right relationship with his Lord. There is a choice here that we have to make. You and I have to choose and say today, I want to choose to have a, the right relationship with my Lord and I want to choose to prosper in the things that the Lord has set in my heart to do. I will not allow those things that are coming against me or have come in the past to hinder my ability to build the right relationship with my Lord so that I can have good success. We began our journey today by saying that when you're born again and spirit filled, something happens in your life. If only you will know the truth about what has happened in your life, you will find yourself in a great position to have great success. You will no longer hinder yourself by that mindset that makes you think that, oh, your parents are holding you back. Oh, your forefathers are holding you back. Oh, some old man in your, in your community is doing witchcraft against you. Oh, you, no, you will no longer be running around looking for somebody to deliver you from what doesn't even exist in the first place. I want us to look at Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20. The scripture says, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteous of, righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Why are we today trying to take on the sin of those who came before us. When the scripture says that we don't have to worry about those, let the sinner pay for his sin. Let the righteous receive the blessings of righteousness. The Bible says that we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. Today, I want you to know that the word of God is trying to free you, free your mind from bondage. Free your mind from that thing that says to you, no matter what you try, you will not succeed because your people have done things against you. Some people are still doing things against you. The Bible says today, if you are a child of God, you are freed from whatever covenant that they have created for you. You have a new covenant. You are operating under a new covenant. The covenant written in the blood of Jesus Christ. The covenant that is designed to free you from whatever they are planning against you today. The covenant that is designed to give you the type of victory and success that Esa, the king, was able to find as he began to work to do the things that please the Lord. The son will not be punished because of the father. I want you to think about that for a minute. If you are a child of God, if you are a child of God, what is the point that we are trying to make today? If you are a child of God, if you are born again, if you're giving your life to Jesus Christ, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit of God, you may come from the half family of thieves, but you don't have to be a thief. You can be a saint. You may come from a family that gave themselves to some idol worship, but you don't have to be in that bondage. 
Or you may have even put yourself in self-bondage because of how you think. But you can be free today. Why? Because you are operating, you are operating under a new covenant. The covenant of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I say to us today, let us stop holding ourselves back with excuses. Don't let others stop your blessings. Don't let others stop your blessings. Today, as we begin to round up, I want us to remember what Asa did or began to do. I want us to be encouraged today by the story of Asa, the king. Asa somehow realized that he will be secure in God, in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. You will be free from all bondages if you will submit to the covering or under the covering of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Jesus himself said that only he can guide us into the throne of grace properly. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If you are in Christ Jesus, if you have the Holy Spirit, if you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, if you are born again, you have given your life to Jesus. The Bible says, all things have passed away. Old things have passed away. The covenants of your forefathers that are designed to be ungodly in your life have passed away. The wickedness of the wicked against you have passed away. All things have become new. We are new in Christ Jesus. New with a new slate. With a new ability to succeed. With a new ability to prosper in the Lord. That is what the word of God is saying to you and I today. That's what the word of God is saying to you and I today. We are new in Christ. And in that newness is the blessings of God. Is the ability to have good success. Remember I don't say success. But good success. There are people who succeed badly. But I'm talking about good success. So if you don't want to remain bound by whatever it is. If you want to be free today, if you want to trust in the name of the Lord today, if you want to have good success, if you truly want to have good success, I say to you today, you need to give your life to Jesus. You need to give your life to Jesus. We need to commit our lives to Jesus today. We need to know that when Jesus has freed us, we are free indeed. We need to ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the one that gives us the power. The power to live the life that the Lord wants us to live. The way that the world cannot live. The Holy Spirit is the one that gives us the power to stand above all the people who are trying to attack our lives, trying to destroy our success. The Holy Spirit is what we need. We can't have the Holy Spirit unless we connect with Jesus Christ in the first place. 
going to church is not enough. Preaching is not enough. Doing evangelism is not enough. Serving people is not enough. Those things are good. Those things are necessary. But the first of all, we must come into Jesus Christ. First of all, we must ask for the Holy Spirit in our lives today. So I want to encourage you right now. We are going to pray. And we are going to ask the Lord to grant us His grace. We are going to ask the Lord to bless us today. To free us from the bondage that is allowing other people to stop our blessings. The Bible says in Romans chapter 9 verse 6, Not all that are in Israel are of Israel. I just want you to know that a lot of people call themselves Christians today. A lot of people go to church today. But they have not yet given their life to Jesus Christ. You and I must know the importance of giving our lives to Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you today. I ask you today, have you given your life to Jesus Christ? Can you categorically say that? I belong, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus died for my salvation. I believe according to the scriptures that the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Therefore God so loved the world. He said the wages of sin is there. Therefore God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. And whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. I believe this and I believe he died on the cross for my salvation. Three days later, God raised him from the dead. The Bible is saying to us, if we believe this and we confess him, Lord, Romans chapter 10, if we believe and we confess him, Lord, that we shall be saved. For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Have you believed this? Have you made that personal confession? That personal confession between you and the Lord Jesus Christ. If you've never done that, I want you to right now to say to the Lord, I believe you are my Savior. You are the one that can deliver me from all the hindrances in my life. You are the one that can save me for eternity. You are the one that can prevent me from going to hell. You are the one that can give me eternal life and also protection on this planet. You are the one that can lead me to good success. I yield my life to you today, Jesus. Forgive my sins. I repent today. And I commit my life to you, Jesus. Now, if you say those things and you believe them, the Bible says that you are born again. This God renews you. All things have passed away. With your sins and with everything that's passed away, the Lord has now made you new in Christ Jesus. That means... You should not be condemned by your past because you are now free because Jesus has made you free. You cannot be condemned by your ancestors' issues and their sins because you are free from it. You cannot be held by those who, mean, who have ill will against you and they, could, they don't sleep at night because they are doing some incantations trying to keep you down because you are above them now because you belong to Jesus Christ. It means that the world is open to you for you to go and have good success. But before you can truly have good success, you need something else in addition. You need the Holy Spirit. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is the infilling of the Spirit of God in you. The Bible says when you have received it, you will be empowered. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. This is why I ask you, have you been baptized in that spirit when you are baptized in that spirit something happens to you that the world cannot receive you receive the ability of God in you to do the right thing you receive the enablement of God to continue even when the road is a little difficult today I want to pray right now for the Holy baptism of the Holy Spirit even where you are right now I want you to begin to pray 
for those who have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says what the Lord did to the people of the disciples was he breathed the Spirit upon them. And they breathed, they received the Holy Spirit, just like our Lord breathed, our God breathed the Spirit upon Adam and Eve, and they received the Spirit of God. Today, through this Airways, we breathe the Holy Spirit upon you right now and say, Receive here the Holy Spirit of the living God because He's not bound by limitations of man. I don't want you to think that way. He will feel you right now. Yeah, if you have the Holy Spirit in you right now, I want you to pray for those who are yearning for the Spirit of God. Pray right now and say, God, Father, fill my brethren, free those in the world today who have the heart for God, but don't have the Holy Spirit. Fill them with the Holy Spirit, Father. Let your Spirit descend upon the one who is hungry and yearning for the Spirit of God. Let, the one, let your Spirit come upon that child of God who feels like he can't move or she can't move because the people are walking against him or her. Let, her receive, let him receive the Holy Spirit right now and see the freedom that is in our Lord and our God. Receive you the Holy Spirit and receive the power of God today. For I tell you, when you have the Holy Spirit, you will have something that no man can do for you on this planet. Only God can do for you. So I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus for everyone who is hungry for the Spirit of the living God. Father, let your Spirit come upon them right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I say, receive here, receive here the spirit of the living God in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And I say to you today, remember, don't let others stop your blessings. Because our Lord Jesus has already prepared your blessings for you. And you can have it if you really want it. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is Nedu Obed. I just want to thank the Lord for his word today and his blessings upon our lives. If you have been blessed by this, I want you to give him a clap offering right now. Just give the Lord a clap offering wherever you are right now. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.